While creating a new German-Chinese trade policy, the German minister said, "We are no longer naive." On September 13th, German Economy Minister Robert Habeck said the German government was working on a new trade policy with China to reduce dependence on Chinese raw materials, batteries, and semiconductors, and that the Economy Ministry was committed to a new German-Chinese policy, much of which was already in place. You will see from it that we are no longer naive," he said. This is the first time Germany has made it clear that it will convert its hardline stance into specific policy measures. If China sticks to the rules which enable values-led trade, China is a welcome trading partner. But we should no longer let ourselves be blackmailed. Not when China meddles with trade fairness, such as with state subsidies for companies, which gives them an advantage. Habeck didn't give a full overview of Germany's new measures towards China, but said they would include more careful scrutiny of investments by Chinese communist companies in Europe, for example, in infrastructure. Habeck said that given the heavy reliance on exports to China in many sectors, Germany must turn to new trading partners and regions. For the past six years, China has been Germany's largest trading partner, with trade between the two sides exceeding 245 billion euros or 246 billion U.S. dollars in 2021. The current German government is tougher on the Chinese Communist Party or CCP than the previous one, and they are concerned about Germany's dependence on the Asian superpower. Last Thursday, Reuters reported that the German Economy Ministry was considering measures including reducing or even cancelling investment and export guarantees to China and no longer promoting trade fairs. The renminbi plunges, resulting in the biggest annual drop on record. The Chinese currency renminbi suffered its sharpest single-year depreciation against the American dollar on record as the U.S. and China diverged in monetary policy. While Beijing has taken strong action to stop the devaluation of its currency, there appears to be little success so far. The plunge of the RMB happened just before the 20th National Congress of the CCP. The U.S. dollar has appreciated by 14.6 percent this year. Other reserve currencies in the SDR basket have depreciated significantly against the background of the U.S. dollar's appreciation, and renminbi also depreciated by about 8 percent. Economists warn that the renminbi could fall further as the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates and China's central bank continues to maintain monetary easing. Recently, the Chinese central bank took strong measures to set the mid price of the renminbi, trading with the U.S. dollar at the weakest level in two years. It has also sharply reduced the foreign reserve ratio required of financial institutions. Effective September 15th, the central bank announced that it would lower the foreign reserve ratio requirement for financial institutions to 6% from the current 8%. This is the second time this year that a similar measure has been announced, and the two percent cut is the largest since 2004. Chinese officials also warn speculators against shorting. The long-term trend of the renminbi is clear. There will be two-way fluctuations and no one-sided market, which is reasonable, balanced, and stable. And we are glad to see it. 30% of stores in Shanghai Financial Center closed down, shocking the industry. Severe zero-COVID policy measures have hit Shanghai's business activity hard, with a recent survey by a Chinese real estate analyst showing that some shopping malls have a vacancy rate of more than 30%, including the malls in Lu Jiazui, Shanghai's financial center, where a third of the stores have closed. According to the report by CAIC Limited, a leading Chinese real estate big data application service provider, the vacancy rate of Lu Jiazui Chengda Plaza surged to 34 percent, followed by Shimou Plaza and the People's Square shopping area with a vacancy rate of over 20 percent. The report expects vacancy rates to continue to rise in the second half of the year as the peak season passes. However, Shanghai Party Media Jifeng Daily said on September 10th that the vacancy rate of shopping malls in general was based on vacant area rather than vacant number of stores, citing other data that the vacancy rate of retail properties in Shanghai has been between 6.7 and 8.2 percent in the past three years, with no significant fluctuations.
Jengda Group also said that due to the epidemic and the slow progress of the renovation of some shops, the occupancy rate of the whole site was 75% as of August this year, which means the vacancy rate is 25%. Liu Jiazui is the financial center of Shanghai with a lot of foreign investment as well as many high-end business visitors and high-end residential customers. If Zheng Da is doing poorly, it means that the vacancy rate of Liu Jiazui business buildings is also high. If the vacancy rate in Liu Jiazui is high, then other places should be even worse. Shanghai's GDP dropped by 5.7% in the first half of the year, giving up the top spot for the first time. The weakening economy coupled with the public's uncertainty about the repeated lockdown of the city has led to a rapid decline in consumers' interest in spending.